Masters. Hey, Masters. If you know me and you've been listening to my podcast, you know health and nutrition is number one. Check out AdvoCare products. I am a distributor. Go to LiveLongerSmarter.com. We got everything you could imagine for your health and nutrition goals. If you're interested, at the end of the podcast, at the very end, there'll be more information on the products. Also, Land Voice is one of our sponsors. They have amazing services. If you need leads, please check out Land Voice for FISBO, Expired, Circle Prospecting, a dialer, whatever you need. Go to davidihill.com, affiliates. You can click the Land Voice link and all of the special opportunities will be there. Get ready for one more sale. Inspiring you with ideas through powerful and engaging interviews with top performers of their field. Now, join us as we discuss techniques and strategies of the coolest and most successful people on the planet. What up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. Guys, well, you know, every week we bring you the best of the best in the sales realm. And hey, you know what? Even I, everybody has to take a week off, right? Including me. So I'm enjoying my family this week. We're on vacation, but I did not want to just leave you guys hanging. So I went into the archives and I brought Dirk Zeller back. Listen, Dirk is a real estate coach. He's been doing it for a long time, probably longer than most of us have been in real estate. And this interview is phenomenal. And it's all about working with sellers and creating urgency and creating motivation. And as he talks about getting those sellers to get off the couch and take some action. So listen, I really, this is one of my favorites and I'm just happy to share it with you again. So listen, enjoy this interview on your path to mastery and I will talk to you really soon. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be in Newport. So if you guys are in the Newport area and you want to try to connect, look me up and we'll see if we can make it happen. Enjoy. Hey, Masters. Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And today, guys, we are with Dirk Zeller. And Dirk has written six or now maybe seven books on the Dummy series, right? And get this. One of them is called Success as Real Estate Agents for Dummies, right? So that's awesome. Hey, Dirk, what's going on, man? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks, David, for having me. Excited to be with you for a while here today. Definitely. It's an honor to have you. And a little bit about you. You're an entrepreneur, salesperson, speaker, success coach, author. You've written 10 books. Again, six of those or seven of those now, Dummy Series, because I I understand that you recently updated your real estate book, right? Or you wrote a second edition. You're a professional speaker. Um, You've presented to audiences worldwide on sales, time management, which, man, we're going to talk about that today. And success, you're with the National Speakers Association Award for speaking. You have a certification, designation, and all these great things, man. You get the highest honors in professional speaking. So that, that's really cool, man. Congrats on that. And your most rewarding role in life is being a husband to your wife of 27 years, Joan, and father of Wesley and Annabelle. So, hey, man, thank you. Congrats on that 27 years thing. That's amazing. I've been married for two years, and I... I know that takes work, so thanks for being with us. Thanks, David. It you know for those guys, maybe you're like me. I'm married up in life, so you know it's more work on my wife than it is me. I love it, love it. Yeah, well, it's more work for me to to keep my wife happy. <laughs> you do have a real estate background, right? Tell us a little bit about your real estate background. Yeah, I was a top ten agent in a four state region for a large national firm for a lot of years, and you know I had a really good practice. You know, I was selling 150 homes a year, but kind of the difference between myself and let's say a large volume agent is Thursday afternoon, like clockwork after my fourth year in the business, we left Portland, Oregon, where I sold. And quite frankly, we we drove to Bend, Oregon, and I had a vacation home there. So I spent Friday, Saturday, and Sunday there every single week out of the real estate game enjoying golf and the recreational activities that happen in Bend, Oregon, where now I permanently live there. Good that you have the perspective and the background in real estate. So talk to us about the books. Well, we'll start first with the success as a real estate agent for dummies. Like what, what, what made you write that book? (laughs) 
Well, it was the dummy series books are obviously very known and very positioned in the marketplace. And it was focused on what a new agent, let's call it, needs to do or an agent that's struggling needs to do. And so we're in our third edition that just came out actually this week of that book. It's just a boot camp book of prospecting, lead follow-up, sales presentations, time management strategy, the mental approach to being successful in real estate, as well as the physical actions that people need to take on a consistent and ongoing basis to be able to do that. That's great. Well, I was thinking you were going to say you wrote it because all real estate agents are dummies, but <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's got some, well, you didn't laugh at my bad joke. So anyway, it's all good. <laughs> now, listen, let's talk about the book now. So it's kind of like the guide for whether you're a new agent or you're an agent, you just want to move forward in real estate, right? So let's dissect the book. Talk about some of the strategies. Like if somebody picked up the book, what would you say? These are the three things that you're going to get from this book that's going to help you become more effective as a real estate agent. Well, it's about the how-tos. The dummy series books are very focused on how-tos. They're hard to write. I can tell you just really honestly, having done a number of them, they're relentless in their editorial process in creating how-tos. Okay. You're going to get granular how to prospect, right? How to do lead follow-up, how to generate referrals, how to work FISBOs and expireds. I mean, it's a great book and strategy and complement. The couple of new things that we added to the new book, right, was how to be successful in any marketplace, whether the marketplace is, right, a low inventory marketplace or the marketplace is shifting to, right, a more challenging marketplace with more inventory and we're not in a seller's marketplace anymore. We're in a, we're in a buyer's market. What do you do? What do you change? What adjustments do you make? How do you be successful in any marketplace? Certainly technology, which, you know, you're on the cutting edge of this, David, right? Technology has influenced the real estate marketplace heavily, we got 70 million internet leads that are being created on an annualized basis for 5.2, 5.4 million sales a year. I mean, there's a huge drop off between an internet lead and the conversion rate. Mm. And what do you do? How do you convert them? How do you get face to face? Right? 67% of the buyers buy through the first stage and they meet with. You got to be more compelling and valuable on the phone, on the text, on the interaction to try to get the prospect to meet with you because two-thirds of all real estate transactions on the buy side happen through the agent that met with that buyer first. So let's dissect that then. So let's go back to the internet leads because you're right. The majority of the leads right now are coming through the internet. Everybody starts on the internet. It's, it's proven like 90% are going to start. So how do you get those leads engaged? Like, wh what's, what's the first step? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to get beyond the brush off. Mm -hmm. The response that a typical agent is getting on an internet lead when they actually reach that internet lead and have a conversation, 75% of the time is, hey, I'm just looking, I'm not ready for a real estate agent yet, blah, 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 blah. That's a typical sales brush off. Got that. But now I'm going to even back up before that, though, because I think the first thing we need to do, Derek, is... Um, we need to like respond immediately, correct, with internet leads? Correct, absolutely. The age-old case study from MIT, the Harvard Business Review study, where it's five minutes or less response time for whether that's a registration lead or a direct inquiry lead is still absolutely true. Yeah. And in fact, if you look at Zillow concierge service right there, concierge service for people that are using premier agents that are using Zillow and Zillow's got their dialers in Seattle that are dialing all those leads. They're targeting 90 seconds. Mm. They're targeting, I mean, literally when that registration comes in for that agent in Poughkeepsie, New York, that's right. A premier agent on Zillow, Zillow's dialing out their dialers out of Seattle are dialing out within 90 seconds. So you got, I mean, you got to get these people while they're still looking at the computer, right? Because right. 20 minutes later, they're on to something else in their life. Exactly. There is no substitute. You're absolutely right. There's no substitute for speed to lead. None. All right. So, so we get that. So now you're right. I'm on the phone with you. You followed up with me in 90 seconds. Okay. Now I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm all set. So where, where, what are we doing now? 
75% of the time, you give me the brush off, right? Hey, I'm just looking. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm look, just looking. I'm all set. Right. That's the instantaneous response I'm going to get 90% of the time. So I'm going to say, hey, David, can I ask you, you're probably in the early information gathering stage. Would I have that correct? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact. Okay. Gosh, I have to tell you, that's a stage where a real good agent can add a lot of value. I can direct you to some websites and some resources that you probably don't know about and information that you don't have access to. Is that something that you might be interested in? Yeah, I would be actually. Boom. Okay, now I've gotten beyond the brush off. I'm going to move into providing value and transition from providing value to an appointment. So, so let me. I want to. I want to break that down too. Though. So, you said you're probably in the early information stage. So, by doing that, what did you just accomplish? I accomplished lowering sales resistance. And okay, and, and why is that? How did? Why? Meaning, I get you, you get me, right? In the sense that I'm not just trying to slam you into a home. Hmm. You could also use a customer service angle. Hey, I want you to know, David, this is a customer service call. This is not a sales call, so you can completely relax. Love it. Yeah, I love it. See, the internet, the internet consumer believes that, and this is a key distinction for all your listeners, the internet consumer believes, and they've been led to believe by their own volition as well as all the third-party websites, right, the Zillow's, the Trillia's, the Realtor.com, that the information they're staring at on those sites is the exact same information that an agent has. Mm. They don't see the difference because they don't understand the difference and the agents aren't selling them the difference. That's one of the biggest distinctions. In other words, your listeners, your agent should be just as we do of all our clients, right? Get them to understand the differences between what the consumer sees and what the agent sees. In other words, side-by-side -side comparison. I'm going to pull up the property on 123 Banana Street based on a consumer on Zillow and Trillion Realtor.com. I'm going to put all, pull the property up on 123 Banana Street, right, in my own MLS access. And I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison so I know exactly what my MLS is syndicating out and what it's not. So what does that conversation sound like, Dirk, to the consumer on the other end? You know, David, can I ask you, are you aware that as a consumer looking online, and I see you're using Zillow, it's great service, do you realize that you can't see days on the market? Hmm. No, I didn't know that. And actually, that's kind of important because if you were to know that this property was on the market for six to eight weeks, you'd probably be less interested, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, that's true you probably would want to negotiate if this property interested you more significantly with a seller, but you don't really know that. Yeah, I definitely would probably want a better price on it, that's for sure. Okay, great. So we have some things that we have access to as an agent, right? Additional agent comments, days on the market, a lot more detailed property history on the property when it's been off and on the marketplace. There's a whole host of information that we have access to that actually the consumer doesn't. Hmm. I'd be happy to provide that level of information. Is that something that you would find value in? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, I love it. So, so with this is a follow-up immediate, getting past the brush off, now you're bringing value. Right. I got to bring value, but I got to bring value in a manner that is exclusive, meaning that they can't get somewhere else. Again, the online consumer literally believes, hey, listen, right, I got the tiger by the tail, I can see all these properties. Yes. The other thing you could do, and, and again, just as a positioning strategy in sales, would be the two biggest frustrations that you'll always hear from consumers in today's marketplace is, hey, well, I can't find anything that I like, or by the time I find it, it's gone. Mm. Yeah. Those are two key questions to have early on. David, can I ask you, right, are you seeing anything that you like online? You may respond, no, gosh, there isn't anything good. No, I was going to say, yeah, no, no, it's just, you know, I can't find anything. It's all, it's all like junk. Okay. And when you do find something, can I ask you, by the time you reach out and get information on it, is it already gone? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the problem. We're in multiple, you know, I just had a bidding war. You know, this happened like three weekends in a row where my agent's telling me I need to offer over asking price. And, I, you know, I just don't want to, I don't want to do that. 
Oh, okay. So you're currently working with an agent. Is that correct? There was an agent that was showing me properties, but, you know, she's obviously not able to, to help us. So, uh, you know, we just keep getting in these situations where we have to go way over asking. So that's why we're honestly just trying to go direct to the seller going forward. Okay. So can I ask you how that's working for you? Uh, well, it, it's not working yet because I'm on the phone with you, obviously. But I'm going online. I'm trying to find properties, and I was kind of hoping to, uh, to get in touch with the seller. But I have agents keep calling me back. Right. Right, because you're continuing to go back into seeing different properties. Yeah. Ex- but by the time you reach them, the properties, a good portion of them are gone. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Are you aware, because you may not be, that over 38% of our marketplace right now is selling in less than seven days? Yeah, I, that's what I've heard. I mean, and like I said, I, I had an agent, you know, just somebody we met was showed us a couple of properties and we made a couple of offers, but we didn't get anywhere. And that's why we're just like, we're going to do this on our own. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I can send, understand that's the natural reaction because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of consumers like yourself feel that all agents are pretty much the same. And I would assume after your experience, you probably feel that way. Yeah. As a matter of fact, yeah, we do. Okay, so let me ask you this. If there was a clear and definable difference and you could see and understand that difference, again, is that something that you would at least want to explore? Here's the thing. We, I mean, we're really looking to find the right house. I mean, I'm open to finding the right house for the right price. Okay, and I don't know what that is for you, David, because we've just met at this point, right? I mean, we're just five minutes into a conversation. I don't know what the right house is for you. I don't know what your timing is. I don't know what the previous problems have been for you at this point, but I do know that we have a system and a strategy and we are successful with clients like yourself. Why don't we set 10 minutes to meet? Let me buy you a cup of coffee at Starbucks and let's have a conversation and see if some of our services meet your needs. Okay. Yeah. I'm open for that. Okay. And I could have done an alternate choice. I could have done a option close, right? I left it real loose right there, everybody. Probably I wouldn't have done that in most situations. I probably would have done an alternate choice and given him a direction. But again, everybody, the the goal has to be getting face to face. You have to sell in the gap. You got to create the gap and fundamentally sell in the gap. And the problem for most agents is we're not creating the gap. We're not identifying the pain point and the frustration level. And I'll go back to my original point in terms of, hey, the two big pain points for consumers right now are, hey, I'm not, gonna fi- I'm not finding anything I like, right? I'm just looking through properties and they don't meet my needs. Or when I find something, it's gone. And I threw in a statistic in there, and it's a statistic your listeners should know, and that is what percentage of the inventory is selling in their market in seven days or less. Because hmm. you can build urgency off that number in most marketplaces. What up, Masters? Don't worry, we're going to get you right back to the show. And if you're looking for more ideas, techniques, tools, and strategies, Get yourself a copy of The Sales Playbook. Simply pause the show, go to the salesplaybook.net or go to Amazon, type in The Sales Playbook. You rock. Enjoy the rest of the show. You know, a couple of things too that I, I liked. I mean, obviously in the beginning, you really connected with me by saying, you know, you're probably in the early stages. And I was like, yeah, you're absolutely right. And you did it again when I brought up the other agent. I don't remember the exact words, but you are something along the lines of, yeah, well, geez, it sounds like you didn't have a great experience and you're just looking for the, for the agent that can help you with the process or something along those lines, right? So again, you're, you're relating to me. Right. It's a conversation. It's a dialogue. It's not a monologue. Conversational sales, quite frankly, and I've been in the real estate and sales business for almost 30 years from selling an intangible sports marketing product before I got into the real estate industry, airtime and on the professional racquetball tour. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're going to sell that, you're going to learn to sell. Okay. An esoteric sport is racquetball and all the television time on professional racquetball tournaments and shows. I learned how to sell. And I, could, I, I can tell you in 27 years of being in the real estate industry, I, I'm just being straight up with you and your, and your listeners. I think the sales skills are worse today than I've ever seen them in 27 years. 
Yeah, yeah, and I I'll, I agree with you. I, and I think there's also the dis- distinction between selling and like you you talked about having a conversation with somebody, right? Being present with someone and having a conversation. Right. Absolutely. It's not just a hey, here's the script. The nuances are coming off the script or planning a branching script or a segmenting script and then being able to come back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's really understanding. So I'm going to go back to your book, right? I'm assuming, and I don't want to make assumptions, I haven't read the book yet, and I plan on getting it. You're teaching people how to uh, use script and dialogue and have these conversations. Yeah, in Success as a Real Estate Agent for Dummies, certainly in the first year in real estate, which is another book I wrote, in The Champion Real Estate Agent, which I would characterize as I characterize the handful of books that I've written in the real estate industry, first year in the business book as College 101, Success as a Real Estate Agent for Dummies is 201 classes, Mm. the Champion Real Estate Agent is a 301 class, and the Champion Real Estate Team, the original book on how to build a team in the real estate industry that was published right er early on, very, very close to around MREA, the champion real estate agent team, excuse me, is a 401 class. That's great. I'm going to, I got to get out there and get these books. That's, that's good stuff. So let's switch gears a little bit. Right now, inventory is low. I I know you're coaching a lot of real estate agents. So I I believe it's all over the country, right? I mean, everywhere I talk, talk to. Yeah. Um, inventory is like, you know, you list a property, it's gone. First open house, your multiple offers. And one of the challenges we're dealing with is, is sellers, they want to list and take advantage of it, but they don't have any place to go. Right. How, how are you dealing with that? Or how are your clients dealing with that? Well, you, you hit the nail on the head, David. I mean, in the sense that the seller, they fundamentally struggle with, hey, I don't find anything that I like. And so therefore, right, I don't want to list my home because I don't want to have my possessions in two shopping carts pushing it down the street. Mm. That's the fear and the engagement. I think the agent has to do a better job of selling the concept of security and protection. That in, in other words, we have a seller security plan. We secure our sellers. You don't have to finalize a transaction until you find a suitable replacement property. But you've got to put your home on the market when we've got to actively market the home and get it out there. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I mean, what what if uh, I, I can't find a property though, Dirk? I mean, I, I can't find another property. We've been looking for, for months and months. Okay. And I think the psychology, everybody, that we have to understand, David, is it's real easy for them to sit in their living room in the comfort of their home that's okay for them, but not ideal for them, and probably be unrealistic. It, I mean, that's easy. And I, let me share this little, little antidote. I moved almost two years ago out of a home that we built from the ground up as our vacation home here in Bend, Oregon, that I spent all those weekends at. And we lived there for 20 years. I mean, it was a wonderful home. And I got real serious real fast when we listed it and had to clean up after two dogs, a cat, and two kids that don't like to keep their rooms clean. Mm. I was in a little bit more pain. It was really easy for me to sit on the couch and say, no, that one doesn't meet my needs. No, that one doesn't meet my needs and be stuck in the mud and right, not move. Mm. The, the, the problem was you have too many people sitting on the couch who are looking for perfect and they're not willing to flex. Yeah, I, I, well, we get that. I mean, so what? How do we get somebody beyond that sitting on a couch and? Well, you convince them to list that you can protect them and let the hassle factor of being on the marketplace mitigate the, their expectations a little bit. Mm. I mean, you know, people that sell homes are involved in selling a home. I mean, it's not it's not the greatest, most pleasant experience to pick up after two teenagers, two dogs and a cat to create a home that's showable. Hmm. The flip side of this is is also, you've got a listing to market. Oh, hey, listen, I'm on your it side here. I, I get you this. Know, if, I, I... If, if we don't find the right home for your client, and I'm not suggesting not finding the right home, please don't assume that in any way, shape or form. 
but understand in the interim, you've got a listing that you can market that will generate leads for you. No, of course. Of co- absolutely. I, and, and hey, listen, this is for our listeners. I mean, this is what we're all dealing with right now. I've got two dozen people sitting on couches waiting right now. I mean, I've got a huge pipeline. Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of people that should have their house on the market and they could really capitalize, but they're not taking advantage of that right now because, like, maybe it's it's like you said, maybe we're just not. I'm not doing a good good enough job being a salesperson and really educating them. Well, I think the other thing is we've got a scenario coming in the future of this industry that is going to have a detrimental effect on on consumers' buying power. Right, the interest rates that are invariably going to move here with the Fed increasing interest rates over they're calling for three moves this year total mean there's a loss in buying power that's going to happen in the next 18 months to 24 months to 36 months that some of these people are going to get closed out so let's have this can we have let's can we role play this conversation so i'm the seller and i'm I'm the coach lack of motivation like oh yeah man i definitely dirk you when i find the right house you you got my listing man no problem So, David, let's look at the option of listing your property, getting them on the marketplace, because if you find the right home, can you actually sell and purchase that home without selling this particular property? I could do a bridge loan if I wanted to. I I mean, I, I don't really want to have two mortgages, but if I had to, I mean, I could. Okay. So you can actually do that because that puts you in a rare category. It's, trust me, I don't want to do it, but if I guess if we found a perfect home, I could do it, yes. Okay, so describe for me the perfect home. And I'm going to have to go that direction and mitigate that level, David, because obviously most people wouldn't be in that category of being able to do the bridge loan. Got it. Okay, so uh, no, I, I can't do Let, that. Let's say that he couldn't do a bridge loan, okay, because that's, that's a pretty specialized niche. And you're going to have to get face to face with that person and do the dance, so to speak. Well, I think, too. I mean, some people say, well, I could do it, but can they really do it? Are they willing to do it is another question, too, right? Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. So, I mean, I've had people, oh, yeah, yeah, if I have to do that, I'll do that. But, you know, I I still don't want to put it on the market. So we don't really know if they actually can or not, right? I mean, I guess they could, but. Let me give you one other angle real quick here, Okay. And then, and then let's role play this. David, can I ask you, are you primarily looking online and looking at virtual pictures and tours to determine whether a home meets your needs or not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm looking at the properties you send us, actually. Okay. And I have to tell you, sometimes the properties are actually better in person than they are online. Let me let you in on a little secret. Real estate agents are notoriously bad photographers. Hmm probably would make sense for us to go out and look at a home or two and do the comparison between right what you're seeing online and what you might actually be able to get in person Hmm. yeah i mean i don't i don't have a problem going looking at a couple great let's set an appointment let's go do that let's look at a couple okay got it so you're actually willing to take the person out and and show them a couple homes what would be the the reason for that Now, David, let's say I'm early stage. You and I don't have much of a relationship at this point. Okay, that makes sense. Right. I'm going to take the next step, which is, hey, David, for me to prepare and do the best job for you, I just need a few minutes of your time to understand your situation at a greater degree. Perfect. Then I'm going to go in and qualify. Okay, got it. So that's somebody you're trying to create that relationship, that rapport. All right, so now let's go back to you know, somebody you, you, you have a relationship with. They can't do a bridge loan, right? They have to sell the house in order to buy another house, but they're still sitting on a couch. Right. So I'm going to say, hey, David, let's do this. Let's at least set an appointment. Let me come out and take a look at your property and let's talk about our seller security plan that ensures, because I know your biggest fear is probably, hey, we sell your home right away and then you're forced into buying something you don't want to buy. Would that be correct? That's kind of the biggest fear. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a program to resolve that, that that'll never happen to you. Mm. So let's go ahead and book an appointment and then I'll walk you through that. And then you can make a decision whether it's a fit for you or not. And it's totally your choice. Yeah, that's good. You know, you do a, a really great job. I don't know if you know who Chris Voss is. He's the uh, lead FBI negotiator. He wrote a book called Never Split the Difference. And he has a technique called labeling. And essentially what you're doing is you're telling people what they're thinking. 
For the most part. And I think you, you do a really great job at that with what you just said to me. So that, yeah, because it's, how do I say no to that? You're like, yeah, of course. Right. But that's their fear, right? I got to resolve. If I'm going to get a listing, I've got to create a solution for that fear. Mm. And it's, it, it, I mean, it's a legitimate fear. If we don't think that's a legitimate fear on the part of consumers in today's marketplace, then we're not listening to them very well. You know, you just nailed it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. That's a, that's a huge takeaway, actually. It's a simply profound takeaway right there, right? It is a real fear. Yeah. Well, you, you know, as, as astute as you are, David, most things that create success are simple. Yeah, absolutely, my friend. Absolutely. So let, let, let me let me ask you, what, in your opinion, I mean, you're dealing with a lot, you work with a lot of agents. What's the biggest uh, challenges right now agents are dealing with? It's either lead gen or lead conversion. You know, if it's a large team, it's lead conversion. They've got lead generation figured out. You know, they just generate more leads than anybody else or than most people in the marketplace. And they can bump along at poor quality conversion rates and still be okay. But they can't be awesome, right? They can't be explosive. And, you know, it's for the typical mid-range agent, right, that's really wanting to get to the next level. It's lead gen. Mm. There are only four ways to increase sales production. When you really boil any of this stuff down that all of us teach, it's number of contacts, it's method of contact, it's quality of the prospect, it's quality of the presentation. If you're going to have choke points or problems, it's going to be one of those four. And it's somebody that's trying to increase the performance of your company or sales in your company or sales in your business, you got to figure out, okay, which of those four is the choke point right now? Yeah. And I'm either making enough contacts and, oh, yeah, I'm actually doing enough effort in the contact area. I'm talking and engaging with enough people. Okay, it's probably that either the people I'm talking to aren't any good or motivated or well, it's more likely, hey, my sales presentation on the phone isn't very good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Without question. So so what about mistakes? I mean, what are you seeing are the mistakes that a lot of agents are making right now? I, I, I just think, again, for that mid-range agent, it's, it's, this is still fundamentally a face-to-face, belly-to-belly business. You're not going to convince somebody to buy a home or to list with you off a text or an email. You know, you may open the conversation, but you got to get face-to-face. Yeah. And if you're not getting face-to-face enough and you're solely relying on technology, you know, I love the new technology. I love the new add-ons that we've got in terms of social media interaction and all the different components. I mean, the different ways we can touch people, but you give me an agent that's on appointments and face-to-face with prospects on a regular basis, I'll give you an agent that is making two, three, four, five hundred, a million dollars a year. Ah, oh, man. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, I, I in my it was a broad question too, and you you made it work. And, and here's the thing. You're right. Every role play we did today was about you getting in front of that person, getting face to face. And I think a lot of us, Dirk, as we try, at least I know I'm guilty of this, is try to just do so much pre-qualifying and not get face to face until you're absolutely certain this person's ready to, to actually do something, right? I mean, did you see that? Is that is that a common thing or is that just my, my, my thing? <laughs> I think, that, well, the, as you get to the elite echelons of the industry, D- David, like you are, right, you're, you're going to be more circumspect in, in, in meeting with the prospect and running them through more of a gauntlet. I get that, okay, and I'm in agreement with that. Let me give you a, a revelation that I've had in the industry in the last, you know, half dozen years, and that is the appointment means everything. My suggestion would be for your listeners, even maybe for yourself, is to focus on getting the appointment, then focus on qualifying. Hmm. The appointment is everything. And it doesn't mean I have to go to the appointment. Now, I'm not going to blow somebody off, right? But I can focus on getting the appointment with you, David, and maybe not have asked some of the qualifying questions. I may have asked a few of them to keep the dialogue going and do a little qualifying, but I'm really in my mind fixated on getting the appointment. Then if you notice, I just did this with you in a demonstration like less than three minutes ago. Then I said, 
hey, listen, for me to provide the best value for you and to make this appointment very valuable to you, I need a few more minutes of your time. And then now I've opened up basically framing all my pre-qualifying questions around servicing them well. Hmm. I now go through my qualifying questions, but it's framed around service, not looking for their soft underbelly, and right, because that's what they think. And then now, if I get to the end and you don't qualify, I just merely say, hey, David, you know, gosh, in my excitement to meet with you, I think I got the cart in front of the horse. Hmm. This is my suggestion. Because you have such a marvelous FICO score at 420, <laughs> right? Boom, I'm undoing the appointment. Got it. Got it. Right. I'm suggesting credit repair. I'm suggesting that you save some more money. I'm suggesting you meet with my lender. I'm suggesting whatever I'm suggesting. But it's because, hey, my excitement to meet you and serve you, I think I got the cart in front of the horse here. Oh, I love that line. That's brilliant, man. Yeah, you have some really, really good stuff on here. This is some good nuggets you gave us today. I appreciate that. Now, listen, what, what question, uh, Derek, what should I have asked you that I, I didn't ask you? <laughs> I don't think so. I felt like we had a great conversation, and hopefully your, your listeners have gotten value from it. Yeah, yeah, I thought we did brilliant, except for you not laughing at my joke. But other than that, we, we had a good conversation. <laughs> Hey, listen, and I really wanted to get into time management. We're going to have to do that again and get into time management because we just spent the whole time on, on this, which is uh, brilliant. I mean, this is good, good content that I want to get out right away. So thank you for that. So how do our listeners get in touch with you? They can go to our website at realestatechampions.com. Uh, we offer a lot of different services from coaching to, to training. We, we're, we do a lot of live virtual classrooms. They're not webinars. They're very interactive live virtual classrooms. We've done more than 6,000 live virtual classroom training sessions in the last seven years. So if they're looking for skill-based development in their industry, we, we really have good opportunities to raise their skill. And obviously, I tried to demonstrate some of that today in the role-playing in their interactivity that you and I had. Yeah, I think you did a great job with that, too. So as far as books, uh, obviously, we have your books, your, your series for dummies, different level of real estate. Give, give us an, a book recommendation that anybody that wants to get better at sales and needs to read. Wow. There's so many. You mean of mine or, or somebody else's? We know we're going to all read yours. So give us something, <laughs> though. You know, like, what's that one book that if, you know, you, somebody said, you know what, I, I just, I really need to take my, my sales, my mindset, my drinks, my skills to the next level. Uh, you know, what would you say? This is the book you have to read. I have always loved, and it's, it, you know, it's not brand new, but I've always loved Brian Tracy's advanced selling strategies. Hmm. Interesting. He really has done a nice job on correlating and organizing sales process and sales strategies and broken it down. Love it. So advanced selling strategies, is that what you'd said? Right. All right. Awesome, guys. For my listeners today, you can go to davidsfreebook.com and get yourself a copy of Brian Tracy's Advanced Selling Strategies. So, hey, Dirk, man, it was an absolute pleasure. And the final question for you today, my friend, is what is the one thing that you want our listeners to take from this interview on their path to sales mastery? The one thing is focus on the appointments. Your success will be based on the number of appointments that you book and the number of times you get face-to-face -face with a prospect, even in today's selling world, technology world. Thank you, my friend. It was an absolute pleasure. Mine as well, David. Thank you so much. Hey, Masters, you guys know how important health and nutrition is to me. I just want to talk to you a little bit about products I use called AdvoCare. I've been using these products for about a year and a half now, you know, mostly just for energy. They've got a really awesome drink. It's called Spark. You know, if you want to check out anything, I would tell you, go check out the energy drink Spark. That's what I did for, like I said, almost a year and a half without even trying any of their other products. And then this past January, uh, a bunch of us, January 4th, decided we we're going to do the 24-day challenge, which is a 10-day cleanse and then 14 days 
of just really healthy eating, vitamins, uh, meal replacement, just awesome 24 days just to kind of get yourself on track and, and get into some right habits. So Richie Ryan did it with us. Guys, he lost today's February 5th. I think he's at 24 pounds lost since January 4th. Melissa at our office uh, lost six pounds. Uh, Min at our office lost five pounds. Uh, guys, I mean, listen, th- it's amazing. I, what, regardless, if your goal is losing weight, my goal wasn't losing weight. I did the challenge just so I could experience it. And, you know, I actually I lost a few pounds, but now I, I put some weight back on because I started using some of the supplements and the protein powder and all the other stuff. So now I've gained about three pounds of muscle and just felt awesome. My energy's through the roof. So, whether you're looking for energy or you're looking for just wellness, I mean, they've got some amazing green products that I, I love taking before I go to bed. Or if you're looking for performance, athletic products, we've got the athletic performance products. And then just active, you know, if you're an active adult, uh, maybe getting a little little older in the age and you want to just keep everything working the right way and functioning. Listen, Gary Keller said it best. If you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? And I, I just love that. So, hey, I just ask you to check out Advocate's products. I'm a distributor, so I'd love to help you talk to you about your nutrition and health goals. You go to LiveLongerSmarter.com. LiveLongerSmarter.com. If you loved what you heard in this episode and you're looking for more techniques, tools, strategies, and ideas, simply go to the Sales Playbook. .net and get yourself a copy of the sales playbook. You can also go directly to Amazon, type in the sales playbook and buy your copy today. You are listening to One More Sale with your host, David I. Hill, author of the sales playbook. Get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.